thank you very much, Nikki. And I, I was sitting back there with, uh, with Mr. Bronstein, and I was trying to, to, in my head, get that Trumpster Death Star. I thought that was a great, I'd never heard that before, Trumpster Death Star. Well, it's great to be here, great, great to be back and actually be with you once again. We, uh, over at the White House, like from time to time, I know you had Senator McConnell, uh, we like to be a, as positive as we can be and make sure that the facts are what the facts are. Um, working with you all in the counties over this last year has really been very, very special. There's been a real engagement by the White House, more than certainly I've seen when I was a county official, uh, with this president truly understanding the issues that are so important to you. But I want to remind you that when President Obama took office, you know, we were at about 8% unemployment. And the last time I was with you, which was a little over a year ago, uh, we were in the 6%. We're now under 5% unemployment in this country of ours. That literally creates an opportunity. That's 14 million jobs. When I was here uh, last time, we were at 13.2 million jobs. We were losing, as the president came into office the month before he came in, we were losing 800,000 jobs a month. We now have literally had 71 consecutive months of private sector job growth. That's not bad. 71 consecutive months of private sector job growth. That's the best we've had in this country since the early 90s. And literally, we're in a position, and I want people to hear this clearly, that since the president took office, this administration, this president of the United States, has decreased has decreased the deficit by two-thirds, has decreased the deficit by two-thirds over the seven-plus years that this president has been in office. We literally have 18... I think that's a big deal. And for whatever reason, people never seem to follow those kinds of facts. I think it's a big deal that 18 million more people have health insurance. And when they go to bed at night and put their head on the pillow, they literally do not have to be concerned when they awaken in the morning that a child might be sick or a spouse might be sick. Literally, they are there with their insurance. 90% of America now has health insurance to provide for themselves, wellness insurance to provide for themselves, an opportunity if you had a preconditioned difficulty to still have health insurance. That's the kinds of things, those are the kinds of issues that have made a difference in your home communities throughout the United States. We have more kids graduating from high school than we've ever had in this country. We have more kids graduating from college than we've ever had in this country. And they're better prepared with more skills to take the jobs of the future. So when people begin during this political time and Democrats and Republicans are arguing about the world is horrible, the sky is falling, oh my gosh, just step back, take a deep breath, Think about, about what has occurred over these last seven years, and then go out and listen to those that you want to support and be sure they're telling it like, in fact, it is. Now, we're not getting a lot done on Capitol Hill. I suspect that uh, Senator McConnell made that very clear to you earlier. We're not getting much done. So the last couple of years, and especially this past year, has been focused on counties and municipalities in a way that we have never focused before. Because you guys and gals, the leaders at the local level, are making things happen. You are the real, real innovators of ideas and the opportunities for new things to be started and ultimately to be replicated in other communities. We've got a situation where we have been working with you over the last, uh, last year to ensure that, for example, paid leave. You know, we've got 43 million people in America 43 million people in America who do not have the opportunity when they get sick to have paid leave or when a family member gets sick to be able to have paid leave. So if a child is sick or a parent is sick, that individual going to work has literally got to make his or her mind up as to whether they can afford to do that. Well, we now have, thanks to you all, 21 communities that have stepped up with paid sick leave, 27 communities that have stepped up with paid family leave to ensure that families are in a better position. Would not have happened at the national level, has not happened at the national level, but it has happened where the rubber hits the road because you understand the effect that it has on the families in your community. The same thing last year, we talked about 27 cities and counties 
had stepped up and increased the minimum wage, 27. We now have over 42 communities around the United States that have stepped up and said seven and a quarter is not enough. That was, that was fine years and years ago when it was set, but that's not going to provide an individual an opportunity to have a living wage. And the same thing with affordable health care. Without the counties and your health departments and so many of the nonprofits in your communities working with individuals who have a right to enroll and become a part of the Affordable Care Act, we never would have reached 18 million people, 90% of America being covered by the Affordable Care Act. And it was counties like Dallas County in Texas. It was counties like the King County folks in Washington State. It was counties like Salt Lake County over in Utah and so many others who stepped up and engaged their community to ensure that those that were eligible to, to, uh, to enroll in uh, the Affordable Care Act had an opportunity to enroll. And we had a healthy communities challenge among 20 communities around America. And literally, because of the success of, of Milwaukee County, Wisconsin, the Milwaukee community won that challenge and signed up on a percentage basis more folks than any other community in the United States. And we congratulate the Wisconsin folks for being able to do that in that county. And I do. Now we're working with you all on skill training. We have got to ensure that there are opportunities for the men and women in your community that want to work to be able to have that chance. But as you see time and time again, businesses are saying we have all these open jobs, but we simply can't find folks that have the skill training or the technical training necessary to fill the jobs. So we began funding, and you have supported and worked with early childhood to get kids started. And we've also worked with the Tech Hire program, a program to literally teach coding, because there's a million and a half jobs available all over this country in the tech field. Folks always think of tech like you have to go out to Silicon Valley. I'm talking about tech like what goes on at the hospital when they're doing coding, or in a doctor's office, or at a factory. And you all have stepped up and joined us and given us an opportunity through Tech Hire to really make a difference. We've got 21 communities had signed up up to this point. We now have over 30 communities that have become a part. That's 150,000 people that have gone through a six, eight month coding program and have been hired by 500 employers who have stepped up and hired those 150 thousand people that have gone through the program. And we're looking for more communities. If you've got an interest in having a tech hire commitment to work with your community college and with Washington to assist you in developing the chance for tech jobs, you need to check with us because we have the technical assistance that can get you started without any significant dollars. Counties like Buffalo County out in Nebraska partnered with the IT services firm out there to provide the coding training and literally created over 100 IT careers in the Nebraska area through that program. So time and again, we're working to try to skill and, and, and provide the technical assistance and assist in the education. You saw where the president focused on the importance of having free community college. I mean, you know, years ago, we started a public school system in America, and there are many who believe that the strength of this country, certainly our economic strength, is based on the fact that we have public school opportunities for all to go through the 12th grade. Well, it's 2016, folks, and the time has come to take it another year or two forward. And the president proposed just that for an additional two years, where you could take a certificate, you could get an associate degree, and literally provide the opportunity to be trained to take the jobs of the future. Well, there have been states and there have been communities that have stepped up and done just that. Several of your communities at the county level have stepped up and said, we'll take care of the community college for those young people who have a B average or better. Several states, like out in Delaware, like out in Oregon, in Tennessee have stepped up and said, if you graduate high school, we'll give you the opportunity for a, few, for a free community college. And without your support, the, the last item I want to remind you of, the, without your support, the veterans' homelessness issue would not be moving as aggressively forward in terms of ensuring that the men and women who fought for our country have a, have a roof over their head and an opportunity to live in a, in a situation where they can be proud and positive and an opportunity for their future. The First Lady stepped out and said, this is, a, this is something that has to be changed in this country, veterans homelessness. And without the communities at the local level stepping up and literally focus on, focusing on the importance 
That is an issue that we are resolving, getting squared away, and without your help, we wouldn't have been able to do that. And the final issue is criminal justice. I don't have to tell county folks, I remember it very well when I was county executive in my home county, the amount of money that's being spent at the jail, the amount of individuals that go through the jail. We have over 11 million uh, folks go through your jails on an annual basis. Millions and millions of dollars, actually billions of dollars, $70 billion has been focused as on, on the annual cost of the criminal justice system. And we have got to get it right. And we have, and the good news is, listening to uh, uh, Ron Brownstein, you might not think that there are any issues that Democrats and Republicans agree on. There is one, and it is that we have to change and reform the criminal justice system. We've got to work at the beginning, the entry to the program, to get folks who need, need assistance, either mental assistance or, or need uh, uh, drug assistance, treatment. We need to get them out of prison and get them into treatment centers. While they're in the jails and onto the state prisoners, we've got to make sure that there's opportunities to work with them in terms of education. And at the back end, when they get out and they literally re-enter back into your communities, we need to be sure that they have the tools necessary to have a chance, to have a chance to get a job, to have a chance to get back into a situation where they are an asset in your community, not a liability. And right now in the Senate and in the United States House, we have a bill in each body that's moving forward for criminal justice reform. And I know that you all are following these in terms of your uh, National Association of Counties, but it's up to you all at the local level to understand these bills and let your congressmen and senators know how important it is and the positive effect it will have on your community if in fact we move forward in a, in a change in a different way. Now you're gonna hear from uh, Governor Vilsack shortly to talk about the rural communities and the focus of the president's executive order that he put into effect back in 2011, dealing with the White House Rural Council, a council that focuses on mental health, opioids, job training, suicides, and all of the things that are so important to communities, especially in the rural areas where there is difficulty in terms of providing the treatment and the support in those areas. It's a very important issue for this president. He's working very, very hard on it and has asked Governor Vilsack to take the lead, a former governor of Iowa, who is the Secretary of Agriculture, to take the lead in these last 11 to 12 months that we have to focus on rural America and do what we can to bring all of our resources from all of the silos of the federal government into play to assist the rural communities. That's what this president is about for the next 11 plus months, plus appointing a person to the Supreme Court. And in, <laughs> so you put that together, it's going to be a very exciting 11 months. It's going to be a very passionate 11 months. It's going to be a very aggressive 11 months. And this, this administration, as we go with the remaining year, will be actively involved with the National Association of Counties. The way you all have been focusing on making a difference in your communities, we want to be there hand in glove with you to ensure success. Thank you very much and have, have a great convention.